holy, holy chaverim. I'm going to send a link in the description. Don't you worry. We always get into the deepest of places when we listen to the Nagunim, the songs before we start. Chaim, great to see you. Great to see you. DJ, you look great. You know what's um, unfortunate as well? I think I have to start saying the, the link in the description. How I, I'm like a little afraid of the Kutate's feels, and I think I have to start doing the full, the full zeh. I only do a piece of each tefila. So I'm constantly flipping from tefila to tefila. Maybe I should just continue from where I left off uh, last night. I don't know. But we're, because we're talking about humility right now, when it comes to the teshuva, we're going to talk about humility right now. Rav Nassim bin Nimrod. Bring me to true humility, Rebona Shailam. Help me break and remove all arrogance from myself. Let not the slightest hint of arrogance ever enter my heart. Bring me to genuine humility. Obviously, the tzvila, this cry out to Hashem, is the shame called Yisrael, and this kabura is for the quick refua for Pesach, Ruvi, and Ben Yosef, and Sarah. We'll continue in the tzvila. Now it's the shame called Yisrael. Wait, I want to add a name into this. Uh, Barel Benitsa, a soldier in my unit who has been shot and is in critical condition. If we can all just keep him in mind. Read the name. Barel Benitsa. Ruth Davor. Wow. Wow. Cover, we have to crowd even more. Also, uh, tomorrow, if you could send me the name, that'd be great. Great, yeah, sure. true, godly wisdom and understanding. So that I'll be able to cultivate the ways of humility. Save me from false humility. Affected humility aimed at winning people's esteem. This kind of humility is the ultimate in arrogance. Times, uh, talk about that after. Let me never pretend to be humble with the intention of winning admiration and esteem. Rav is basically uh, summarizing our discussion. Loving and merciful God, just help me come to complete humility and perfect serenity. Ending off with tefillah, there's so much more. Please, Rebona Shaila, master of the world, loving God, your love is true love. Let your love and mercy be awakened for someone as lowly and miserable as me. Let me feel my true lowliness. Bezrat Hashem. There's more tzfila, so we could all be on a cliffhanger until mm -hmm. tomorrow night, but I don't know if I'm going to find the right spot. So we're going to be left on a cliffhanger for the rest of our lives. Give out. <laughs> give out. Give out. What a tzfila. <sighs> for all the people that are uh, injured, that need a refua, that need simcha, that need a fixing, we all need fixing. Hashem Kolei We're continuing last night's Torah Chabura from Rav Nachman. At first, this humility will not actually be discernible on your face. Because sin weakens a perso person's mental powers, preventing them from radiating on the face. So we're, we're talking about, just a quick summary, we're talking about when it comes to ourselves, we may feel like we're on top of the world, give up. But it's not good to only be in that place. We have to understand that we're special. We have to understand that we need fixing. And once we're able to truly acknowledge our voids within ourselves, our flaws, our shortcomings, and crowd to the Rebona Shalom, go to the Rebona Shalom, ask Tati for help. Then you start to feel that lowliness. You start to feel that you're far away from completion, from perfection, from Shlemus. We all yearn for Shlemus. We have to understand that we're yearning. We're not there. So Rav Nachman is saying, that at first, this humility, 
when you get up in front of Hashem and you start to acknowledge those weak points within yourself, you're not really going to see on the face. You're not really going to see on the face. Before repent, repenting, his mind is so weakened that he has no conception of the true gravity of sin and the greatness of the one he sinned against. We, 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 we don't have the mental capability to understand how deep our sin goes. We don't. But as he returns to God and puts aside his folly, gaining wisdom and understanding, his shame becomes increasingly visible on his face. However, once we, once we fully surrender to Hashem, we start to gain this understanding, this wisdom of teshuva, of what it means to be humble in front of Hashem. And once we reach this place, I think Rav Nachman is saying his shame becomes increasingly visible on his face. Maybe Rav Nachman means to the world around you, to the people around you. But also he may mean, I mean, I, I don't know the words of Rabbeinu. I don't, I don't know what the, the Rebbe really means, but also Hashem. Right? Hashem's able to see on your face. He's able to see that you're crying and that you fully surrendered and you're falling into his hands and you're relying on him. You want from him. You're demanding of him. Binachman continues this beautiful Torah, actually the conclusion. The tefillin, Chaim, we lost you for a second. The tefillin are the sign of humility and attachment to God. The light of the tefillin is a ray of the light of God's inner countenance. When a person achieves this humility, all his sins are forgiven and it becomes attached to the tree of life. So, Chavra, I'm going to need to pass this uh, interpretation to someone else. I'm just not there. Can you repeat it? I think I missed the last one. The tefillin are the sign of humility and attachment to God. The light of a tefillin is a ray of the light of God's inner countenance. When a person achieves this humility, all his sins are forgiven and he becomes attached to the tree of life. So uh, any of the viewers on YouTube, <laughs> anyone here, you want to help us a little? You want to help us just a little? I'll help a little I'll by saying, the, I'll help a little by saying, the Rebbe said, if we know Aleph, let's teach Aleph. If we haven't gotten to, to Bayes yet, then we don't have to teach Bayes. So deep. So deep. So deep. In my yeah. life, we were discussing this, Samson, just quickly, Chaim. The Aleph can be so deep. Can be so deep. <laughs> oh my gosh. Chaim. Chaim, your turn. Um, I guess... If we're going to teach our Aleph, then we know that waking up every morning, the purpose of half the things we say in our, in our morning tefillah is it's a lot of thanks. It's a lot of recognition of where things come from. You know, it's like not just seeing a stream of water, but looking upwards and seeing the source of that water. Like, it's all about recognizing straight on the, on the morning. You know, we, it's like the Seder of tefillah. It's a lot of, a lot of thank yous. So it could be saying that like, the tefillin that we put on are humble because, and I'm not going to, I say, just say this is not what you're saying because Reb Nachman, I'm just a random dude from Teaneck, New Jersey. But um, mm -hmm. what I would take out of this is that like when a person is no able such, to. No such Jew exists. Just so you know. Fine. No such random Jew from Teaneck, New Jersey exists. I guess random Jew from Harsina. But, um, <laughs> you start the day by lowering your head and, and acknowledging that everything came from you know came from a higher place 
And the instant you realize that, then you see that everything comes from there. And that's like, I guess, connecting yourself to the eights, it's Chaim, because you realize that, like, you got all these brachos from that eights every day. And so, and so and that's being humble, and that's being connected. And that's all. That's what I think. I think it's a perfect conclusion to this beautiful Torah. Unless Tamar wants to say something, add something to the Kavra. If I may add, I know I didn't. I know I spoke a lot already. No, no, no. no. Keep speaking. Keep speaking. If I may, excuse me about what you said before, Never not about the time. My whole point was that I'm not at the level of bet yet. I haven't gotten to time and then the tefillin yet. Um, para para, as they say. Um, I think Chaim's on Bob, by the way. He has to be on Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, on like, I'm on like half of Olive. If Olive's like made out of two lines, like I'm still on the first line of Olive. Thomas, like, it's a little zit. The first, it's like the the first guy, like I'm on the line, not even the C, you know? Um, so what I want to say was, the Rabbi says that there are two levels of Yura, and I spoke about this actually yesterday. There's a higher level of Yura and a lower level of Yura, and if we're speaking about humility in relation to Elul, then it's only so right that I mentioned the, the Lava Trevor's teaching that he brought down from the Freitic Rebbe and from the Freitic Rebbe from the Rebbe Rashab and the Rebbe Rashab from the, uh, the fourth Lava Trevor Shmuel and from the Tzamech Tzedek and the Mittler Rebbe and ultimately the Alter Rebbe and then before him Baal Shem Tov, Magad of Medesh and before him Baal Shem Tov um, this teaching was brought down that the higher level of Yira is, is the appreciation that we are absolutely united with God and therefore his his emissaries in bringing that humility and that fear of God into this world. That's the higher level of Yura. While the lower level of Yura is being, as you said, totally mitbatel and totally uh, in line with the will, like saying, I am nothing. That's that humility. It's a feeling of, there are two separate feelings. There's the feeling that I am actually nothing. That like this physical world is, is totally null and void. That, I mean, I personally, you can, I have said that I can, I feel that sometimes and it's a classic emotion in the in the mindset that we as a group have sometimes as individuals we have sometimes that this world is shuffle or it's not worth it or it's, there's too much materialism but the higher level of your uh, is realizing that mater this materialism that we at one at one point thought we should get rid of is actually the exact vessel in which we're supposed to bring godliness into this world and that's the second level the higher level of humility the higher level of fear of awe that we say okay i know that god is totally one with this entire world and therefore i have to use that which seems to me to be reality to bring his presence here only then will i truly fear god in 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 the most full way to, to achieve this all amen sparks i mean oh mine oh mine Play us, play us something you learned, Jack. No, I, I, I did some strumming in the background if you guys didn't uh, realize. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. <laughs> Cover, we're improving. We're improving. I'm telling you. We're improving. Elul. Start learning the Elul. Shem. Elul. Elul. Chavra, we have to understand 14 days until Rosh Hashanah, five until Shabbos Kodesh. We all know it's still Shabbos right now. And it's the, the news that on Wednesday, Shabbos 24 7. Doesn't end. Doesn't end. But even deeper, Chavra, we all know that inside of us, we have a menorah. That's why Samson. Is that the Beit HaMikdash, the menorah is within him. He is the menorah. And it's 97 days until Hanukkah. The days are going by, Chavra. The days are going by. It's sad to count down. But it's also exciting because we have right now. We have right now. Mamash, right now. It's 9.46 p.m. What are we going to do right now? Are we going to hear about Moshe Shiv Shabbos or are we going to go to sleep? Are we going to make uh, some late night popcorn? Who knows? 
Who knows? Or is Chaim going to be strumming until uh, the next morning? Maybe. We're both trying to learn the guitar. Also, for any of the viewers, I know I'm, I'm just spewing right now. For any of the viewers on YouTube, if you know how to play guitar, you want to give a little, a little lesson, I'm here. I'm not here. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm also going to be in Yerushalayim for the next three days. So if you're in Yerushalayim, give out. Gavalt and Chaim, we all know you're on Regula, so I'm expecting to see you. Totally not on Regula. It looks like you're on Regula, but it, it looks like you're there. <laughs> and if not, you're on a very chill army base. <laughs> oh my gosh. Samson Shift to, to end off. If anyone wants to know the power of you, never know. Stick around after the recording. Oh! You never know. Kevra, I think we need to unmute ourselves right now. Everyone needs to unmute themselves. Samson, you want to start it? You want to start the niggin? Okay, I'll start the strumming. Friend, you never know. Mom is never know. I don't know what niggin are you talking about. Never know. Oh, that one. You never know. You never ever ever know. Oh. I am telling you, never knows, or she never knows. I don't know if the boy really don't know. Did he die? Die, yum bum bum. Did he die? Die, yai nai nai. Did he nai nai? We know it's Evel Kikarovi Lecha. We are very near to him. We're very near to the Ibarra Shailam. Mama's across the street. It's right here. It's right here. Mama's right here. Uh, Hasidic master, Moon Kachar Hasid. I feel like all the kinderlach are Munkatcher Chasinim. Munkatcher Chasid. Give all the kinderlach. Kinderlach. Oh, wait, what? So we all know the time. We need, we need a name. We need a name. What's the name? Rivka. We all know Rivka. We all know, we all know Rivka was doing the silent scream there. The silent scream. <laughs> <laughs> she was doing the silent scream. All she wanted to say was Abba. She was screaming Abba inside. Abba! She showed us, she showed us her phone. I thought she was calling the Mashiach. <laughs> well, wait, this is after recording talk, Hebra. This is after recording. This is after recording talk. It goes crazy. Woo! The holy words of the Rebbitzin. Hebra. Everyone should have a beautiful night. Everyone should be healthy, happy, and successful. Rivka, just making Chaim smile is the deepest. Chaim. Mm -hmm. Thank you for uh, protecting us each and every day. Samson, thank you for being the menorah that shines on us. Mamish, mamish, mamish. We're just sipping on the oil. We're feeling the oil. We're seeing the oil. And Tamar, for the second She's still stealing Torah. So for anyone who's going to work, and they have a couple minutes on the bus. Give out. Look at Tamar. She's stealing Torah when she's mamish guarding the country. Maybe that's not a good. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. But... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Give out. She's guarding. The... We, won't tell... we won't tell anyone. 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 The army's not watching this. <laughs> All right. Be well. Rivka, be well.